Yes, Lola. It occurred to me this morning, sitting here, um, how um, earlier on I went through a whole lamentation about my disconnection, and the sitting here, I just remembered those years and years and years of being in the Great Lent. This is the time, Passion Tide and Great Lent now. But those psalms all came back to me. You know those really heavy psalms about disconnection? I'm like a dry twig in the parched desert. Mm. You know, very dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> it just came to me how that programming has undermined mm. the, the, and strengthened the disconnection. Mm. You know, maybe those were dark times when, when, that, um, when, uh, when people felt disconnected. But now, in, in these times, where just life is buzzing, it's it's not appropriate anymore, mm -hmm. you know, to go mm -hmm. through those kind of um, dark, dark times. Mm -hmm. That's the shadow coming up. The person who wrote the song about the dry twig in the desert, in the parched desert, excuse me, was probably in a Pluto transit when they wrote the song. <laughs> but yes, every year on your birthday, your crown is directly lined up and you if you choose to let it in, you can experience the Christ consciousness. And then six months later, um, your half birthday comes along and your crown chakra is as far away from that connection as it can be. And you experience your deepest shadow. And both of them are powerful times, but in a different way. If you understand that your birthday is a time to reach for the unity to let it in and feel the connection and your half birthday is a time for um, go plumbing down into the depths of your shadow and releasing releasing some of it instead of what happens is most people get depressed around the time of their half birthday but they don't realize it's because it's their half birthday so this continuous cycle is actually yes. necessary, but it, yes. it mustn't look the same. It must actually be... No, it's different. It, the, we go In this world, we cycle through transitory states that are different. The, the secret is in learning how to work with them, recognizing what they are. As Yet said, we, our shadow comes to us and we reject it. And then the unity consciousness comes to us and we reject it. In the interests of trying to, s to be stable and hold our consciousness the same all the time, instead of realizing that we are cyclical beings, we live in an ebb and flow of light and dark, and learning to love that, learning to receive the light when it's offered, and receive the dark when it's offered, and work with it, work with the light in realizing that you're in an altered state, a transcendent state that is um, unity, and then recognizing that you've dived down into um, the shadow. The story of Demeter and Persephone. Demeter was the earth mother goddess in Greece, an ancient, ancient goddess. Her daughter Persephone um, was captured by Pluto and taken to the underworld for six months of the year. And then she came back to her mother in uh, the summertime. So the, the Greeks interpreted that as summer and winter, or dark and light. And you can look at it in terms of shadow and unity, separation and unity, shadow and light. It's um, very... M each, each of us embodies that essence of Persephone who cycles through her birthday and her half-birthday would be another way of looking at it. But that was a time of mourning. Yes, because in this world we're caught in the death processing. We have the death, the death programming to deal with. But you can't fight it and hate it. You work with it and you love it. The middle of February rolls around and that's my half birthday and I remember when I was younger I would just sort of mope around the house and wonder why I was always depressed in February. But then some wonderful person told me that, oh, that's my half birthday. 
And suddenly it made sense and I started using that time to let myself die to my old ways, you know. So now February is an important time for me. I always go through a huge transition. Just did, in fact. I was on the wild coast when I had my half birthday. And uh, I went down into the depths. Brad knows, that's why I look at him. He, he has to listen to it all because I talk about it and I tell him about it and we process it and so on. And, and I went through a huge shift. I, I fasted um, and just shifted enormous amount. So it becomes a power time for me. It's not just a time when I'm miserable and wishing it would go away, hating it. It's a time that I embrace and use it for transformation. And th likewise, if you have a Pluto transit, so, you know, most people rush off to the doctor to get Prozac when they have a Pluto transit. But the truth is, you know, it's time to get down and really accept you've got a shadow instead of being in denial of it. And Pluto's relentless. You can't, um, maybe Prozac makes a slight dent in it, but <coughs> Pluto will just eat you up. You can't fight that, that Plutonian energy. You have to surrender and go with it. And it will show you the places where you're stuck. And you release them and you fly free. It's beautiful. So we are in cycles. We must accept them. The problem, the reason people turn to Prozac instead of facing their Plutonian passages in life is because they can't balance it out with transcendent experiences. We live in a sort of a flat line reality. You want the whole year to be, you know, the same. The level to which you experience the hell realms, is that um, kind of equal to the experiences of bliss? It should be, yes. In fact, Sri Aurobindo said, you can only go as high as you're willing to go low. Only by doing the shadow work can you access the transcendent? I'm sure that's why the guides had us do a venting the day before we did the transcendent exercise so that you would be a little lighter and have more lift off in the meditation yesterday. It sounds like earning your way to grace as well. No, it's not. It's just breaking the limited bounds of the ego. It's not earning anything. This because this polarity came through in the martyr square. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to suffer in order mm -hmm. to experience. Well, you know that that is the original sin program. So as long as you still have some of that in you, <coughs> it, you know, it's still operating. But you have to, it's, it's punishment and reward. Mm -hmm. That's the original sin program. And the thing is that once, when that is in us, we still do that punishment and reward to ourselves. It's not the divine doing it to us, we do it to ourselves. But it's actually an illusion, it's a program. The whole original sin thing is a program. So, and until it's gone, you have to more or less work within the framework that it offers. But it, at some point it'll be gone. It's really exploring all the hells and the heavens. That's what the journey to enlightenment is. You, you go into the realms of light and you go into the realms of darkness. The hells and the heavens they are. And you explore them. And when you've got to the extreme ends of each of them and seen that they are illusion, the realms of light are illusion too as are the realms of darkness. Then you begin to allow the presence of the unity, what the, the Buddhists call clear light, or um, the uh, one mind. It's got so many names. Um, that 
state of unity consciousness becomes you because you allow it to become permanent the human 